So for coax, um, again, we showed that it has two conductors, as every transmission line must have, two, two wires. Um, and uh, those two wires, generally speaking, are separated by some um, insulator, some dielectric uh, that gives its uh, uh, structural uh, consistency. So the two wires stay in, put with respect to each other so we can model them well in terms of their inductance per unit length and capacitance per unit length. Now I'm going to color code each of those three uh, materials then. Uh, for coax, uh, the inner conductor um, have, I have in red, uh, the outer conductor, uh, the conducting metal, have in uh, gold, and then uh, the dielectric uh, material I'll have written in blue. And I do this because I'm going to show some other types of transmission lines now, and it'll use the same color coding with respect to the uh, uh, two conductors and the dielectric. Schematically, then, when we talk about a transmission line in a, a circuit, we will write the uh, transmission line schematic sort of in this form, where we have uh, two lines which represent the two conducting wires and then some material between them. Uh, so if I apply the same color coding to the uh, um, uh, circuit's uh, schematic element for a transmission line, uh, the top conductor is then the, the red conductor. This would be the center conductor for if it were a corax, although uh, this may represent some other kind of transmission line. The second, second conductor is going to be the bottom conductor. And again, for coax, this would be uh, the outer conductor. And then uh, the material in the middle represents then the dielectric and would be in blue. Again, this is just a general symbol that we have. It could symbolize a coax. Obviously, the uh, uh, diagram here is very different physically from uh, what's going on in the coax. But the symbol um, uh, can uh, represent other types of transmission line structures that are more similar physically uh, to uh, what's being presented here. And those transmission lines are what's called printed circuit board uh, transmission lines. So we build a transmission line right on a printed circuit board. Um, and of course, this is convenient to us because that's typically how we build systems now. We take our components and we, um, we um, connect them uh, together on a printed circuit board. And so we're going to build the transmission lines right on that uh, circuit board is part of that system. So let's look at a couple of, uh, of the most prevalent uh, transmission lines for circuit boards. So the um, uh, first uh, PCB uh, transmission line we're going to talk about is the microstrip transmission line. And I tried to show a little section of a microstrip uh, transmission line here. In reality, this is, uh, you know, we extend further in this direction and that direction, but this is all I could fit on the on the screen here. Uh, this is, uh, again, a substrate that you build uh, your for your printed circuit board. This is the dielectric uh, substrate, the fiberglass substrate, for example. And that, of course, is a dielectric. On the bottom side of our circuit board, we have what we call the ground plane. And so it is a continuous conductor on the bottom side. And this represents the bottom conductor uh, of our microstrip, or our uh, transmission line, rather, circuit schematic. The top conductor of that schematic then maps onto the etch, what we call the top side etch for microstrip. And this is, you know, looks like the uh, uh, conducting etch that we usually um, uh, use to fabricate a, a circuit board. In this case, though, we have to make sure that this etch has the proper width to bring about the characteristics, the transmission line characteristics uh, that we're interested in. Here's a photograph of a microstrip circuit. Now, this looks kind of strange. It looks more artistic than it does engineering, but it turns out um, if you take 723, ECS 723, you'll see what this is. But uh, um, the uh, transmission lines of inductance and capacitance, so oftentimes we'll build reactive devices using lengths of transmission lines, and that's what this device is here. But the point that I'm showing it is to uh, give you an idea physically of what a microstrip uh, transmission line is. So this gray material is simply the dielectric substrate of our printed circuit board. Um, it's this blue material here. If we flip this thing over and looked on the bottom side of that uh, gray substrate, we would see the ground plane. The whole thing would be uh, covered in a conductor. The top side etch, then this red, is this um, conducting structure right here. And likewise, going this direction. Um, <clears throat> and so 
each section here is a length of microstrip transmission line from here to here, from here to here is another length, here to here, another length, and finally here to here. Likewise, there's a length of transmission line that goes from each point to the connector that then allows us to connect this device to something else. And these connectors, if you look closely, are SMA connectors. So we can use coaxial cables to connect this device, a device that is made up of microstrip transmission lines. Uh, if you notice that the width of these uh, microstrip transmission lines is wider than the length, or I'm sorry, the width associated with, uh, let's say, these. And the reason for that is because um, we want these links essentially to have a larger capacitance per unit length and there's reasons for that that we'll get into uh, uh, get into later the last thing i'll say about microstrip is that it is slightly dispersive what does that mean well it's because uh what dispersive means that the velocity of propagation changes as a function of frequency and this tells us that microstrip really is not a true transmission line. So yes it has two conductors top and bottom but the electromagnetic wave that is generated is not purely tem we find that uh the well we call it quasi tem so the electric field and magnetic fields are almost orthogonal to the direction of propagation but they also have a component that will be in the direction of propagation the direction of the top side etch now this is something that is really of not much consequence uh, if the transmission lines are short in length. And for printed circuit boards, they are going to be short in length. We're not going to build a circuit board that is, you know, a meter in length. Um, uh, but if we had, if we did have a microstrip transmission line that was several meters, we'd start to run into problems because it was dispersive. Uh, and again, that's because it doesn't have a true TM wave and therefore it really is not a true transmission line. But for short links, it works uh, uh, close enough uh, that uh, they're very uh, prevalent again in my case uh, in uh, printed circuit board um, applications uh, at high frequencies. So uh, if I took this coaxial uh, cable that I've shown before and I laid down the road and I rolled uh, uh, a steamroller over it and flattened it like a pancake, uh, what I would have done is basically made a strip line uh, transmission line. So this is the um, uh, schematic or the, uh, not schematic, but the, the physical structure of a, a strip line transmission line. Uh, there is the, the upper conductor, um, the top conductor, the red one there. It runs through um, this material all the way uh, to the end. And you can think of this as sort of the center conductor of, a again, a smashed uh, coaxial transmission line. The uh, bottom conductor in our schematic maps onto physically uh, two structures actually for strip line. There is a ground plane on both the bottom and top of the structure. So this is a printed circuit board, um, uh, a uh, transmission line. Generally it's constructed by in two pieces. You have a, essentially a microstrip construction where you have top side etch, dielectric, and, and, and ground plane on the bottom. And then you take another uh, circuit board which is simply a, uh, a ground plane on one side and nothing on the top side and, and push it or put it right directly on top, sort of like a sandwich, put, it, put the pieces together <clears throat> to build a strip line. Now, why would we go all the trouble to take a microstrip um, transmission line and then put another um, substrate right on top of it? The reason for that is because this structure is a true transmission line. It, it generates a true TM wave. The electric uh, the magnetic field rotates around here. The electric field it radiates outward, and so it is a not a it is not a dispersive transmission line. So particularly if we have longer transmission lines on our printed circuit board, uh, if we worry about dispersion, uh, then we might want to go with uh, with strip line. The problem is that, of course, fabrication is more difficult. Like I said, you really fabricate this in two pieces and put it together. And one of the biggest problems is connecting devices then to the top side at your connection, connecting devices together using this top side or this, uh, um, this red, uh, uh conductor. This is the actual, uh, conducting, uh, uh, structure that uh, connects one device to the other. And how do you get to that, um, conductor, this red conductor, um, if it's buried between two ground planes and so you have to sort of have via holes that go through the structure and connect and it becomes a little bit more problematic uh, from the standpoint of connecting components together.
certainly um, a print circuit board transmission line technology that really has had a great uh, um, 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 increase in use uh, over the past couple of decades is what's called coplanar waveguide CPW and CPW uh, the and again from our schematic of our transmission line the top conductor becomes the etch on the top side of a transmission line what makes this difference from microstrip is instead of having the second conductor the bottom conductor on the bottom on a ground plane we build the um, second conductor directly on top of the substrate so there's no ground plane down here uh, the ground is on the top and these uh, ground conducting structures typically are very large islands uh, on that um, uh, printed circuit board and then the uh, the top etch the red conductor kind of meanders uh, through between them and so these gaps between the uh, red conductor the top conductor and the and the gold one the bottom conductor those gaps that's where the fields um, are uh, basically constrained to that area through there now this definitely is not a uh, true transmission lines the electromagnetic fields uh, do not form a, a true tm wave or quasi they are quasi tm wave um, and so the propagation is dispersive and, and more so even than uh, uh, microstrip uh, transmission lines um, uh, these are used then for generally very uh, short distances, um, which if we're again, we're for using uh, printed circuit boards uh, and putting components on there, um, uh, that's not usually a problem. They're not going to be, you know, we want to make things as small as possible. And that really accounts for the uh, popularity of, of CPW is as we try to make our structure smaller and smaller, the transmission lines get smaller and smaller or in, sh in length, and therefore we can use CPW. Also, one of the pop reasons for its popularity is because it has topside ground plane as well as the uh, topside edge. Uh, it becomes much easier to connect devices together uh, since all the conductors, uh, conductors rather, are uh, right there on one plane uh, to be able to solder devices uh, to that. It's problematic to have a conductor on one side and then the second conductor on the other side of, of the substrate. Again, you have to kind of have via holes and drill via holes to be able to do the connections uh, and we can avoid that with uh, CPW. Uh, one last thing about CPW, it says coplanar waveguide, but it's not a waveguide. Um, the, again, it's not a TEM mode, but it's not really a waveguide mode either. Uh, the story I heard, and I don't know if this is true or not, but I'll tell it because it makes a good story, is the uh, person that designed uh, coplanar waveguide and wrote the first papers on its uh, behavior and use, uh, their initials were uh, CPW. Um, um, there and so they wanted to come up with something, uh, uh, some term for it, so that when uh, uh, that was abbreviated to CPW, it would be his or hers initials. And um, uh, I don't, like I said, I don't know that's true. I don't know who actually came up with the uh, uh, coplanar waveguide. Maybe some of you out there can look that up and see if it's uh, true or not, and let me know. So the last uh, transmission line I talk about is uh, what's called slot line. And uh, basically we have two um, connectors uh, or two conductors on the top side, sort of like CPW. Uh, but in this case, um, they're balanced. Um, this is a situation where we really don't uh, associate one with one of uh, uh, a conductor one wire or the other with the with ground or with a ground plane so this is something that's used in what's called balanced operation where neither of the voltages are at ground potential it's really not used very much i just kind of threw it in to uh, complete the analysis so if we look at um uh, transmission lines now that we've talked about we have the coax which is uh, the classic transmission line a true transmission line it's used for uh, uh, connecting together connectorized devices uh, devices useful devices uh, multi-port devices have to have a mechanical connection so that we can connect the transmission line the coaxial transmission line to them um, again um, certainly these days we want to make things smaller and smaller and smaller and so um, uh, that leads to the idea of a printed circuit board transmission line and the prevalent transmission line um, transmission line uh, technology for printed circuit boards are either micro strip or coplanar waveguides. Um, those are the two that we see these days uh, almost exclusively. Um, I didn't tell you much about them and uh, and certainly we don't know about too much about transmission lines um, yet in this uh, course anyway, um, but I just want to make sure that you understand kind of an idea of what these things are when you see them and uh, can recognize those terms of microstrip and CPW coplanar waveguide when you uh, hear them.